Hey, it's your plot pilot here, and in this video, we are going to watch a 2007 American computer animated comedy film Ratatouille. Watch out for spoilers. The movie begins with a news report of Paris's most famous chef, Auguste Gusto, and his bestseller book Anyone Can Cook. However, Anton Ego, a food critic, doesn't appreciate the idea. Remy, a rat, narrates the tough life of rats. He introduces his brother, Emile, and his father, their clan leader. His father had been skeptical of his views on thievery and food, but gave him a job as a poison checker. Remy is a fan of Gusto and follows his teachings of combining flavors. He watches him on TV in the old lady's house. One day, he happens to stumble upon a mushroom. He takes some cheese from Emile, roasting it on the chimney. Lightning strikes them, and Remy marvels at the mushroom's flavor. He scours the kitchen for saffron to enhance the mushroom's taste. Emile is scared for Remy as Remy looks around in the spice cabinet. Remy assures him that they are safe, and he has visited the kitchen a million times. Suddenly, the TV switches off, and the lady wakes up, shocked to witness rats and starts shooting at them with her gun. Emile runs up to the ceiling as shots are fired all around him. She fires at the chandelier. The whole ceiling falls, showcasing the entire colony of rats. His father orders him to evacuate, but Remy runs back to grab Gusto's book. The whole territory boards small boats and starts floating away. Remy grabs the book and runs out the window, using the boat as a raft, and as he paddles forward, he is about to reach his father's vessel when the old lady shoots at the spatula he is about to grab. Remy is left behind as they enter a tunnel. He gets swept away by a strong current and falls into a sewer, only to wake up next to some pipes and await his family. He turns the book's pages when a cartoon of Gusto comes to life. Gusto inspires him to visit the world above. Remy hesitates but builds up the confidence to scout above and comes across some bread. He is about to eat it when Gusto pops out and tells him to cook instead of stealing it. Remy is very hungry, but Gusto says food comes to those who love it. Remy leaves it and keeps climbing. He reaches the summit to find that he had been underneath Paris all this time. He looks at the Eiffel Tower and turns to see Gusto's restaurant. He is amazed and Gusto's logo comes alive. He tells him that he has led Remy to his restaurant. Remy looks inside through a window. Chef Skinner makes a round of the gourmet kitchen. Skinner meets Linguini, son of Renata. Patrick's patisserie chef tells Skinner that Renata was Gusto's old girlfriend. Linguini gives him a letter and requests him for a job. The sous chef, Eric Horst, tells Skinner that they have hired him as a garbage boy. Remy identifies the different workers and spots Linguini spoiling some soup. So he gets outraged but slips and falls from the top window. He runs, hides, jumps across the kitchen till he reaches an open window. He is about to go out but falls in an empty pan. He jumps out into another dish, which the saucier places in the oven. He barely escapes, jumps onto a cart to take tours of the seating area, and returns to the window. He then runs across the soup and is baffled by its smell. He adds some spices and gets intrigued by an idea. Consequently, he adds cream, garlic, and other ingredients to the soup. Linguini witnesses him and entraps him. Skinner advances toward Linguini to berate him for touching the soup, but it gets served to a food critic. Soline Leclerc applauds the soup as Skinner tells Linguini that he will watch him closely when he recreates the soup. He sees Remy escaping and orders the staff to catch or kill him. Linguini traps him in a jar and runs out. Linguini is about to drop him in the river, but Remy looks at him innocently. As Linguini starts talking about his lost jobs and the problem of recreating the soup, he gets surprised when Remy understands him and nods. He figures out that they can coexist and cook food together. He lets him out of the bottle, and Remy runs away. He feels betrayed and Remy feels guilty, so he comes back to him. They go back to his apartment. In the morning, Remy makes him an omelette. Linguini tells him not to steal spices, and they run off to work. Linguini gets confused about where to place him, but motivates himself to go inside. He tries to recreate the soup, but Remy runs over his body and bites him again and again. He goes inside the pantry and shouts at Remy, only to realize that the latter is just hungry. Linguini places him in his toque when Skinner walks inside. Remy grabs Linguini's hair to save him from a collision, and they go inside the washroom and figure out that Remy can control Linguini's actions with his hair. They go back to his apartment and practice cooking. Eventually, they learn to slice onions, dice the vegetables, and the next day, they recreate the soup. Skinner approves of him and tells Colette to guide him around the restaurant. Colette is fierce with him as she teaches him the ins and outs of haute cuisine. Skinner reads the letter from Renata and finds that Linguini is Gusto's son. 
He calls his lawyer and gets suspicious about the unusual time of his arrival. The will was about to expire and Skinner would inherit the restaurant. One day, the customers wish for something off the menu. The waiters panic and ask Skinner for help, instructing Horst to inform them that Linguini will prepare sweetbread a la gusto. The recipe had been a disaster, but Skinner wants to see Linguini fail. Colette and Linguini start preparing the recipe, but Remy improvises the dish. He pours a different sauce on it as it was about to go out. Skinner gets furious, but the dish becomes a success. They serve hundreds of special orders and toast his success. Linguini places Remy outside and gives him food. Skinner grabs Linguini's hat to check for Remy, but doesn't find anything. He invites him for a drink, and Colette feels left out. He gets him drunk and asks about his interest in rats. Meanwhile, Remy gets reunited with Emil. He steals some food for him, which Gusto frowns on. He visits his father and argues with him about humans. His father shows him the rat traps, but Remy still wants to move forward. In the morning, Remy finds Linguini sleeping when Colette enters. He grabs his hair and starts behaving normally. Colette asks him questions about last night's visit. Remy tries hard, but Linguini keeps sleeping. She misunderstands his demeanor and storms out. Linguini wakes up and runs outside to stop her, and is about to confess to Remy when Remy pushes him forward, and they kiss. Anton Ego is informed that Gusto's is becoming popular again. Colette and Linguini start getting close to each other. Linguini stops following Remy's instructions, falls off his head on a bike ride, and is reminded of the fragility of their relationship. Skinner's lawyer confirms that Linguini is Gusto's son. He tells Skinner to wait past the deadline and then fire him. Skinner keeps blabbering about a phantom rat till the lawyer tells him the first sample he sent was a rodent hare. Emil brings his friends to the restaurant. Remy is mad but finds the food storage locked. He visits Skinner's office and finds his will. He reads it and gets to know that Linguini is the heir of the restaurant. Skinner enters the office, so Remy grabs the documents and runs out. Skinner chases him through the streets of Paris on a scooter. Remy jumps over some boats and escapes. Skinner comes back to his office to find Linguini there. Colette shows him the documents and Linguini takes over the restaurant. He stops the microwavable foods and starts rising among the French chefs. In a press conference, he states that his inspiration was Colette, so Remy gets angry. Ego arrives there and declares himself as Linguini's opponent. He tells him that he will visit tomorrow with high expectations. He says that if he doesn't love the food, he doesn't swallow. Linguini argues with Remy that Colette knows how to cook as well. He gets annoyed and throws Remy out, who gets furious about it. Skinner watches them and deduces that Remy is the actual cook. He calls the health inspector. Emil and his friends witness his anger, so Remy tells Emil to invite the whole clan for dinner. Remy breaks in after closing time with his father. Linguini goes back home but doesn't find Remy there. They start coordinating to steal food, but suddenly Linguini comes back. He apologizes to Remy and tells him that a lot has changed, and people finally expect something of him. He says Remy has never failed him. Emil swallows a lot of grapes and falls. The grapes shoot out and hit Linguini. He feels betrayed and gets furious as he thwarts them and leaves Remy disappointed. The next day, Colette tells Linguini to inspire the staff. He starts giving a humorous speech as Remy watches. He gets trapped by Skinner, who tells him to make frozen foods for him, and in exchange, he wouldn't kill him. He places him in his car trunk. Ego tells the waiter to serve him with the best, asking him to ask Linguini to take his best shot at him. Gusto appears again, and Remy gets frustrated. He behaves like a rat for his father, a human through Linguini, and imagines Gusto so that he can talk to someone. Gusto tells him that he never pretended. A statue drops on the trunk. Emil and Remy's father rescue him, and Remy runs to the restaurant. His father asks him why he cares to which Remy shouts that it's because he is a cook. The staff questions Linguini about his recipes, panics, and runs to his office. Remy bursts inside the restaurant as the whole staff prepares to eradicate him. Linguini stands in front of Remy and tells them to stop. He explains that Remy is the real cook and hides under his toque and controls him. He tells the staff they can be the greatest restaurant in Paris with Remy's help and hand him their coats and leave. Colette leaves with tears in her eyes as Linguini locks himself inside his office. Remy's father walks up to him and applauds his guts. He calls upon the whole clan and asks Remy to instruct them. The health inspector walks in and the rats chase him. Remy starts doling out tasks. He shouts instructions and Linguini starts serving the tables. He skates around the area as the rats cook and bake. Colette arrives, and Linguini embraces her. 
She asks what Remy wants to cook. Remy hands her the recipe of ratatouille, a peasant dish. She starts following the recipe, but Remy tells her to do it differently. They prepare the dish, and Linguini serves it to Ego. Ego takes the first bite and gets a flashback of his mother. His pen falls, and he enjoys every bite of it. Skinner runs inside, and he is captured and thrown in with the health inspector. Ego asks Linguini to thank the chef, but he denies the compliment. Colette tells Ego to wait till the rest of the customers have gone. Linguini introduces Remy to Ego, who is astounded but doesn't react much. He thanks them for the meal and leaves. The next day, a glowing review appears, which applauds Gusto's idea of anyone can cook and declares those working at Gusto as the finest chefs in Paris. Remy narrates that eventually they had to free the health inspector. Gusto's got shut down, and Ego lost his credibility. But he is doing great as a business investor. Linguini, Colette and Remy open up La Ratatouille, a bistro together. Ego eats his favorite meal and asks Remy to surprise him with desserts. The camera shows a long line outside the bistro, and the movie ends. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. Let me know what you thought of this movie, and make sure to check out this next one.